Health Hygiene and Wellness. My name is Barasa Sayeni. Once again, uh, I'm hosting Dr. Innocent in our program. We're going to discuss about diabetes, uh, the different types of diabetes, how it affects our bodies, and how we can prevent it. So stay tuned to our program. I hope by the end of this program, you will learn much about diabetes and how we can live by it or how we can treat it in our in our daily lives. Karibu sana, Dr. Thank you so much. You're good? I'm very good since we last saw you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. That's fine. Uh -huh. Karibu sana tuongele kuhusu diabetes. Yes. Utueleze mengi so that we can understand about this disease. And maybe just to begin, why is it that it is the, a disease that is the number one killer right now? Well, diabetes is kind of becoming a very major issue in our country because it's a chronic infection yes. whereby the symptoms are very mild in that whenever you feel the symptoms you really don't feel the urge that this is something urgent you need really to go to, you need to go to a healthcare professional mm -hmm. to be able to check on it yes. because as we will discuss further the symptoms are pretty mild and if you just look at them it is one of those things us as africans we can say you look at them and be like um, I, I think I can just <laughs> wait and watch how it, it uh -huh. will turn out, but yes. it's really a major issue because as you will see, it has some major complications mm -hmm. to all other organs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in the last quarter of this century, uh, or uh, we didn't have many cases of diabetes. What can we say has caused the rise in cases of diabetes as such now? Well, as per one, it's because of the issue of, um, as, we have, as we have developed, there's this issue of there's a bulk of majority of the foods that we consume are majorly glucose-based, or as we can say, they are um, the junk food. Mm -hmm. And mostly junk food is made of mostly carbohydrate products, mm -hmm. e.g. chips, the crunches, yes. these beverage, these early cereals, most of them are carbohydrate-based. And, and as we learn of carbohydrates, yes. we have three types of foods or nutrients. We have the proteins, we have the vegetables and fruits, and then we have the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. The carbohydrates are the ones responsible for giving us energy. energy yes. But there's this urge for carbohydrates because of you, as you realize, carbohydrates have this sweet taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally Starch. like, yeah, this, especially the, nini, the, the glucose kind of form mm -hmm. of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. they are normally sweet. And that's why our push for having more carbohydrates in the market has led to a higher incidence of Diabetes. Uh -huh. So uh, maybe the demand for carbohydrates yeah. has caused the, the rise in diabetes. Yeah. Maybe you can just de define it for, the, uh, for our viewers. Maybe there are some who are wondering, I just know diabetes, but how, what is it? What is diabetes? Well, diabetes is a group of chronic infections mm -hmm. which normally have an issue with the way your body processes sugar. Because naturally, our bodies need, need these sugars in order to provide us with energy. Mm -hmm. In short, if I keep you stuck for a long time, you will die. Why? Because your cells and your organs are not receiving the, the sugars. And yes. sugars are the energy source of our body. Mm -hmm. For you to maybe run, you need to have at least, at least consumed some carbohydrates to give you that energy. So carbohydrates are very essential. You know that they are bad. Carbohydrates are very essential. We need them for production of energy. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come to diabetes... Diabetes causes us to have issues with either the production of a hormone that we'll discuss further, which is called insulin, mm -hmm. or the insulin is being produced, but it's, it's, it's action, whereby its action is responsible for taking the sugar out of blood into the cells to be utilized by the body is the impaired. Mm -hmm. So that is where now we'll come to classification. So essentially, diabetes is a condition whereby a person is not able to regulate their blood sugar levels. Uh -huh. Yeah. In that, that is the simplest way to define it. Yes. You've talked about classifying it at maybe what are the types of diabetes uh, we have and maybe the differences between them? We have three major types of diabetes. Normally, you can hear about uh, diabetes type 1. You also hear about diabetes type 2. Mm -hmm. And there's also what we call gestational diabetes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, makes, uh, what differentiates the three? So in diabetes, and especially uh, these three classifications that we are talking about yes. are among the most common form of diabetes, mm -hmm. which is diabetes mellitus. Now in diabetes mellitus, we have those classifications, type 1, type 2, and gestational. Mm -hmm. Type 1 is the type of diabetes whereby your insulin is not able to be produced for, by the pancreas because the pancreas is the organ that causes the, that produces insulin. insulin. Mm -hmm. So that is where by type 1 diabetes occurs. And in this type of, because in, in, in to understand this form of how diabetes comes about, mm -hmm. um, we have this 
organ in our body called the pancreas. Now the pancreas produces insulin. Most people think when you eat, the glucose enters into your sugar and is taken to the cells and they absorb it. Mm. That is not how it really happens. Your body needs to produce this insulin from the pancreas to tell the body, now you can take this sugar from the blood. Mm -hmm. Now if this insulin is impaired, its production, you may eat and people with diabetes know that they cannot take the sugars. They will take the sugars, but the hormone responsible for taking the sugars from the blood yes. into the body cells or into the body is impaired. Now that's the number one factor. And if it's impaired, the sugar cannot get, the glucose or the sugar cannot get into the cells to be utilized by the body. That's why people with diabetes mm -hmm. suffer from, they have a lot of sugar in their blood but they are starving from the cells. Mm -hmm. We normally cause into the body, into the, the body tries to adapt to this by alternating into fat breakdown. Mm -hmm. Because in diabetes, the sugar cannot make use of this glucose. Because as I, have, as I have said, we need this insulin for this blood sugar that you have eaten, this sugar in your blood, yes. for it to be reabsorbed into the cells. So in type 1, the producer, the producer yes. of this insulin, which is the pancreas, yes. is not producing it. Mm -hmm. And this is now type 1 diabetes mm -hmm. because in the long run, the body will not be able to absorb the glucose because there's no insulin production. Uh -huh. Yeah, And in normally type 1 is the one normally diagnosed in babies. If you find a small kid and you are told they're diabetic, that is type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Normally it's because it's usually onset from birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Type 2? Type 2 diabetes is whereby the hormone producing the insulin mm -hmm. produces it very well. But now the issue arises with your cells. Your cells are not responding to taking in the sugar. Uh -huh. Because normally we act like insulin is like a soldier and your body cells are what the soldier mm -hmm. allows into the body. Now for the type 1 as we discussed, the insulin is not being produced in that the message is not getting to the, to you can say the gate man, which yes. is now the cells, the, the body, which is the insulin, mm -hmm. to be able to be reabsorbed into the body. In type 2, the insulin is being produced, but your cells cannot respond. If your cells are not responding to that insulin, that means you will also be able to be subjected to issues of diabetes because you still not receive sugar uh -huh. in the same manner. Absorption of sugar yeah. is not uh, the same way. Yeah, the cells are not responding. You've talked about type 3 as well. We have gestational diabetes, yes. which is now the diabetes which is developed during pregnancy. And um, usually we'll discuss further on, uh, on why does it develop using the, the diabetes during pregnancy, why does it develop. And the reason yes. is because during pregnancy there is an upsurge of hormones. Normally you know that's why normally there's this argument with yes. females in yes. that yes. 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 when your female partner is pregnant the moods keep on changing. It's because yes. of the hormones. influx of the hormones. Mm -hmm. Now the side effect of this influx of the hormones is that they will cause more fat storage mm -hmm. that's why in during pregnancy you find females tend to kind of gain weight yes, yes now the issue about fats is that fats are very poor mm -hmm. utilizers of sugar levels mm -hmm. that is whereby you now start experiencing issues with insulin resistance whenever you are overweight that's why you are being advised not to be overweight the more fat cells you have the more your body is very poor mm -hmm. utilizing sugars uh -huh. now that's a Pregnancy brings about diabetes. That's why even during antenatal care, we normally text your sugars daily. There are those people who come to the hospital now and are like, why am I checking the sugars every time and I'm just pregnant? It's because during pregnancy, you are predisposed to diabetes because of the hormone influx causing the, the fat levels, fat storage to increase. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, if we can, apart from gestational diabetes, let's talk about these other two. What are the, uh, the causes or maybe the predisposing factors for this, uh, the two? Thank you so much for that question. Mm -hmm. Type 1 diabetes, which we, which we discussed, um, tend to be an issue with the production of the insulin. Yes. It's kind of genetic. Most of the time for families whereby you get your parents or your, ma your, your father or your mother had that condition, mm -hmm. we can say it was in their genes. Now, the probability of you also having that issue is very high I, because yes, yes. You, are, you inherit your genes from your parents. parents yes. So that is what we call genetic cause. Mm -hmm. Type 1 diabetes, kind of, the kid is born and there's nothing they really do based on sugars. Mm -hmm. It's not that they have abused sugars for law, they eat a lot of sugar, no. Mm -hmm. The baby is just born, but their genes predispose to them to getting the diabetes. Mm -hmm. And then we go to type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, we have talked about your cells are now not responding to the insulin. Mm -hmm. This is where by now 
it's mostly brought about by lifestyle changes. Yes. This is why people go to schools. This is why people hold campaigns to talk about what we eat and affects our health. Mm -hmm. That's because type 2 diabetes is responsible for most of these lifestyle changed mm -hmm. uh, causes of diabetes whereby we we'll just regulate what you eat. Mm -hmm. If you don't, what you get is what we call type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is that type 2 diabetes is 95% of all the diabetic cases. Uh -huh. That is why we emphasize more on the your what you eat, mm -hmm. how you exercise, and all other things. Uh -huh. What are the common signs, Daktari, that show up when someone has any of these types of diabetes? Well, when you have diabetes, the first symptom is um, there is a very severe urge for water, what we call thirst. You have this very urgent thirst for water, mm -hmm. and it is accompanied by polyuria, whereby you urinate a lot. You go for a short call a lot. You tend to be like, you find this your friend who kind of most of the time is like i want to drink water mm. and they're not just drinking one cup of water you find somebody drinking a whole liter of water mm. and then because the more water you take the more this is to the way uh, to the washrooms you'll have yes that's yes, where yes. by the urination comes in that's whereby if you have diabetes and you come to the clinic we'll first of all ask you um do you have this strong urge for water which also leads you to more polyuria which more urination yes and that's a fine symptom a very major symptom that this person could be having sugar issues mm -hmm. even at home for people who drink a lot of water i'm not talking about three four cups people want to take a whole gallon and drink it mm -hmm. and constantly they keep on having those symptoms those are symptoms of diabetes number two there's some tingling cessation in the feet that's another symptom of diabetes and the cause of this is because diabetes really affects the blood vessels blood vessels are the vessels through which blood is carried yes, yes. it damages the walls now these blood vessels the smallest are the ones we usually learned in high school they are called capillaries yes now capillaries supply blood to all cells including what you call nerve cells nerve cells are what enable you to to feel the sensation feel, like uh, if somebody touch, touch yeah mm -hmm. you feel somebody has just touched me those are nerve cells normally high sugar levels affect these blood vessels mm -hmm. capillaries which supply blood to the nerve cells that is whereby what we call diabetic neuropathy comes into place, whereby people's nerves become damaged. That's whereby a diabetic patient actually can keep their foot into the a burning fire or unless they can let them corner into a gas which is lit and the fire is on and they won't feel a thing. It's not that they are immune to the to, to the, the fire. to the fire, yeah. no. It's because their nerves are dead mm -hmm. and they cannot anymore process that pain sensation until somebody taps in them is like you're burning your finger or your leg, that's when they respond. That is because one of the symptoms is that nervous damage, which brings about its, its, its characteristic is kind of like a burning, tingling sensation. Mm -hmm. You'll feel people talking about, I'm feeling like some tingling sensation or burning sensation at the bottom of my heels, mm -hmm. the feet, or the hands. That's also a primary symptom. Uh -huh. And then another one is loss of weight. Loss and of weight. It's, it's that one whereby you cannot account for it. Because as you can say, some things like stress can also bring weight loss. Mm -hmm. But for these cases, is whereby people just, you find yourself losing weight without any effort. Mm -hmm. That's a primary symptom of, of diabetes. diabetes. Yeah, and then there's another one which is rare, which is irritability. Mm -hmm. Prolonged high glucose levels will bring about mood changes. Mm -hmm. These people are whereby you just, they are okay, but after some time they start changing their mood, especially when their sugar levels are off limits. Mm -hmm. That is also a symptom of diabetes. Uh, what uh, a question just came into my mind. Maybe mm -hmm. we talk about foods, maybe people eat sweets, we drink yeah. soda and uh, this juice. Mm -hmm. Can they cause diabetes? More sugars? Yes, mm -hmm. they do cause diabetes. And the pathogenesis behind it is that the more sugars you kind of take, often like we kind of tend to re to to um, discourage mm -hmm. the use of these sweets a lot and sugary foods. It's because when you take this blood very high with these sugars containing very high blood sugars, yes, very high sugar levels. When it gets into the blood, the blood sugar levels will drop, will rise because we've taken it, uh -huh, yes, so yes. it will rise. And what is responsible for taking this sugar and putting them into cells? Insulin hormone. Mm -hmm. Now, insulin is produced by an organ called the pancreas. Now, you'll eat all this junk food with a lot of sugars, and your, increase, your pancreas will be trying to secrete the insulin mm -hmm. to absorb that sugar. Yes. You eat it again midday, the, the pancreas works that way. 
in the long yeah. run, your pancreas is overworking. We were not meant to eat a lot of carbohydrates. And as I've said, we tend to eat them more because they are kind of sweet. And we have discovered, especially if you take carbohydrates and you dip them in, in cooking oil yes. and produce the crunches or the crisps, it's, they are very sweet. And that's the issue with you keep on consuming a lot of carbohydrates, your body's pancreas will have to be overworking mm -hmm. to keep up with the rate at which your sugars are coming in. Because its work is being told, produce insulin, produce more insulin, produce more insulin. Mm -hmm. At the long run, your pancreas will fail. Mm -hmm. And at that point now, it will not be able even to produce enough insulin to handle any sugar levels, even if you have reduced to normal levels. Yes. And that's how people develop diabetes uh -huh. you overwork your pancreas which is responsible for producing insulin why do we categorize uh, uh, diabetes as a lifestyle disease yeah we categorize diabetes as a lifestyle disease because um, it, it, it can be brought about by your lifestyle the way you live your life mm -hmm. like that's why I've said most of the time people who eat a lot of junk food carbohydrates based that's why we talk about limiting your your share of carbohydrates in your in your plate. Like if you are eating, mm -hmm. just have your kaugali there. And we normally advocate for fist size, something mm -hmm. eligible for a fist, especially for people who work in white collar jobs like you and me. Yes. We don't tend to do more physical activity. Mm -hmm. So we advocate for you regulate your portion of that white kaugali of yours, or if it's rice, you regulate it. Or if it's these um, sweet potatoes, you put a small portion of it. Because if you eat a lot of it, you will strain your pancreas. And in the end run, it will, call, it will lead to diabetes. diabetes. That is how lifestyle issues end up to lead to, to diabetes. Yeah. Uh -huh, now I get it. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, the, the, the signs. Uh, signs we've already talked about. Yeah. Let's talk about now the treatment or prevention. Yeah. So number one treatment, or as we have talked about diabetes, is the issue of your body failing to regulate your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Now, how will you hamper this? Number one, physical activity. Let's try to engage. Mm -hmm. And we normally advocate for at least 30 minutes, in at least five days in a week. If maybe you choose between Monday, at least from Monday to Friday, you have some physical activity that will last for 30 days, for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily running. You can easily be for people who like riding the bicycle, mm -hmm for people who like swimming, for people who like ball games, for people who like walking, mm -hmm. any of those, whatever whatever activity you like among them, yes. at least every day for 30 minutes, engage in that activity for 30 minutes. What, does this, what, what impact does this have to diabetes? Mm -hmm. When you do some physical activity, your body replenishes or uh, completes all the sugars that it was using to produce energy. Yes. What will come next? That craving for more sugar. And that way, any small insulin that your body produces to be able to process the sugars into your blood, your cells will activate that process because they really need it. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you'll end up being in a position whereby very, your pancreas just produces a very small portion or amount of insulin yes. and your body is okay with it because your body is craving. Mm -hmm. That is why people who do more physical exercise, they are less prone to diabetes because their cells de demand more sugars. And when they demand more sugars, you are, very little insulin is required for you to be able to digest the sugars. And like people who don't do physical activity, mm -hmm. you tend to, your cells don't even need the sugars. Your work is just sitting maybe somewhere all day. You don't really do any physical activity at all. Mm -hmm. And in the end of the week, your body needs to digest any excess glucose you put into your body. What will happen? Your pancreas will be overworking for the glucose that it doesn't even need. Mm -hmm. And in the end, which will lead to diabetes. Yeah. Uh, Dr. If someone, maybe you are living with someone who has diabetes, mm. how can I, or how can you handle them? Well, number one, we kind of tend to tend to say, if you have a patient who has diabetes, make sure at least they have the glucometer, this small machine which usually measures mm -hmm. your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. That machine, they need to keep on checking your sugar levels at least weekly or daily, if you can. Mm -hmm. Because as we have said, diabetes is a chronic infection. It's not that something that you'll get in January and you come to the clinic and we inform you we want to treat you for three months and you'll be okay. No, this is an impairment of the way your body is handling sugar levels. Mm -hmm. This is something that you could probably go from today until you die. It's a lifelong issue. Mm -hmm. That is why we normally say with diabetes, number one issue, try to measure your sugar levels constantly, regularly, regularly yes. to make sure they are within the limits. 
Number two, we can talk about, um, apart from the physical activity we talked about, for people with diabetes, you can advise them to have a healthy diet. What's a healthy diet? Eat more fruits, vegetables, and proteins than carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And in that way, in that proteins and uh, vegetables and uh, fruits, vegetables and fruits bring to us, bring vitamins, vitamins to the table. Yes. Yeah. So when they bring vitamins and proteins are not dangerous to our bodies because normally any excess of these things, we will eliminate, eliminate them. Yeah. The issue with sugars that you, you normally, uh, most people don't know is that sugars, excess sugars are not eliminated. eliminated. There's no way to eliminate no. them. The liver takes that sugar and converts it into fat. Yes. That's why the uh, carbohydrates are really discouraged. It's because unlike proteins and vegetables, that's why they say keep more proteins and uh, vegetables and fruits in your food, but avoid the carbohydrates because once the body gets in touch with those carbohydrates, it won't let them go. It will make sure it stores them. And even if it can't store them in a very variable form, what we call um, glucogen, mm -hmm. it will convert them to fat in that your body really doesn't want to get to, to destroy those carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And that's how it will lead to overweight and issues like diabetes. Uh -huh. yeah. Someone asks, is there a cure for diabetes? Well, not really. Uh -huh. Not really. Like for type 1 diabetes, yes. what we do is that you are put on an insulin rejection, insulin uh, injection whereby, uh -huh. um, because type 1, the issue is your pancreas is not, is not producing the insulin. Yes. We put you on an insulin injection treatment whereby, is whereby you find those people who normally inject insulin into their stomach. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the reason. Those are people mostly with type 1 diabetes or diabetes which is not easily managed. Type 2, we can deal with maybe lifestyle changes. Maybe for those people, we try to discourage them from consuming excess carbohydrates. If it's to the extreme cases, we go to medication now. But in terms of um, one medication that will give you pop and it treats the only condition, it's not possible. But you can't treat your diabetes to the level that it is not hampering your daily life anymore. Mm -hmm. There are some patients who have come with very high sugar levels and at the end of like six months of constant,